The tradition was born in the 1920s as coach Elmer Gloomy Gus Henderson compiled a record of 45 wins and just seven losses between 1919 and 1924. But USC fans wanted more, so the university went in search of a new coach, one who could take their beloved team to even greater heights. SC wanted to get no, uh, Newt Rodney, and uh, he said no, but uh, uh, the young man that just beat me, yeah, I guess, <laughs> uh, uh, Howard Jones at, at Iowa, I think defeated Notre Dame, or it was seven to six or something, uh, and uh, Newt Rockney recommended Howard Jones to the university. Well, he's quite a unique man. He's uh, very straightforward, didn't say too much, didn't ask too much. You never questioned anything he said. Uh, uh, he's the kind of fellow that you'd walk down the street but uh, he wouldn't go over to see you, you wouldn't go over to see him. He went his way and you went your way. Howard Jones was uh, almost always described as this granite face, taciturn man. He loved golf and I, and I, and I suppose he could be personable with his golfing buddies, but the uh, players uh, who played for him and the reporters who covered him uh, always bring up the fact that this, this was a taciturn man obsessed with football. I think this year we have an opportunity with the toughest schedule of any team in the country. I they say you have an opportunity to, to do something. It's just up to you. Jones's passion paid immediate dividends as the Trojans won 11 games in 1925, his first year at Troy. Three years later, the USC faithful got what they had been seeking, the school's first national championship. For an encore, Jones won back-to-back -back titles in 1931 and 32. His 31 team lost its first game of the season, but did not lose again. They had a close call at Notre Dame, but staged an impressive comeback. Trailing 14 to nothing at the start of the fourth quarter, the thundering herd scored twice, led by the running of Gus Shaver and the passing of Orv Moeller. But it was the foot of Johnny Baker that won it. Baker kicked the 33-yard field goal in the final minute of the game for a 16-14 victory over the Irish. When the Trojan train returned to Los Angeles, the team was greeted by over 300,000 people who celebrated well into the night. The 1932 Trojans may be the greatest USC team of all time. Their offense was not quite as overwhelming as the previous season, but it didn't need to be. The SC defense recorded eight shutouts in ten games and gave up only 13 points all season. It was the pinnacle of Howard Jones's career. Howard Jones was to USC what Pop Warner was at Stanford, what Newt Rockney was, because basically they just took the program and they pushed it to an another level. Uh, they were very strong figures and, and they, they, you know, they gave the nickname, the Thundering Herd. He made what SC football, what it later became, the tradition started and then the people who over the years expected USC to always be a great football team. But even Jones had a tough time sustaining his success. His teams became mired in mediocrity between 1934 and 1937. They improved to 9-2 in 1938, capped by a dramatic 7-3 victory over Duke in the Rose Bowl. With 40 seconds to play, fourth-string quarterback Doyle Knave hit second-string end Al Kruger for a 19-yard touchdown. It was the first time Duke had been scored on all season. The following year, the Trojans endured a pair of gut-wrenching ties, but sandwiched in between were seven victories, four of them shutouts. Their 7-0-2 record was good enough to earn them a berth in the Rose Bowl, 
opposite unbeaten and unscored upon Tennessee. I remember they had two All-American guards, a guy named Suffrage and a guy named Linsky. And I can remember when we were in there, we said, boy, we're going to... I said, you, you guys are something else. But I said, hell, I can't even make the first ball club. And I said, we're, we're coming right through you. And by God, we did. We, Amy ran over one side for one score, and he threw a pass to Kruger for the other score. I knew that I was going to be either running the ball or Jack Bannon was going to carry it as a fullback. Uh, no, this is a Rose Bowl. And I said, I'll give these people something to think about. It was a perfect play. And I lobbed the ball out to old Al. He wasn't even looking for it when I threw it. I just lobbed it up there. And he turned, and there it was. And it was a big, I, I thought, how neat that was, you know. Allow me to present this to you and to congratulate you, President Von Kleinschmidt and Hugh Howard Jones. Professor Dickinson, it's a pleasure for me to accept this trophy on behalf of the University of Southern California football team, which I believe played the heaviest schedule and accomplished more than any team I ever coached. Jones's fourth national championship was his last. He coached just one more year before suffering a fatal heart attack, just before the 1941 season. But his 16-year reign changed the University of Southern California forever. It now had a keystone on which to build, thanks to Newt Rockne and the man he recommended for the job in 1925, Howard Jones.